The next unit that we need to get into for microeconomics, trying to wrap up the course for the AP exam that's coming upon us very fast now, is dealing with factor markets. Before we get into some of the curves for factor markets, and the biggest one is going to be labor. Labor and, you know, what, for example, a union does to a labor market and how hiring decisions are made and things like that. Before we do that, I want to review what resources are and pull in the idea of the circular flow, which we haven't done since, you know, we were back in macro a few months back. So, let's start with the definitions of the four types of resources. Now, if you're an IT person, you might say there are five categories of resources, but standard economic books have not caught up with the idea of information as a resource, so we're going to stick with the four basic ones that you're likely to see in any standardized book or on the AP exam. So, we're going to start with land. Land, of course, has a connotation of being a piece of dirt where you can build things and have a house or a factory or a field or anything else. That's not what land means. Land is any natural resource. Animals are land. Metals are land. Minerals are land. All of that stuff qualifies. Next, we have labor. Labor is human work, human effort. Okay? The next one is capital. Capital refers to man made goods that are used in production. Normally, when we think capital, we're talking about plant and equipment. Plant being the physical location or the production facility, and the types of equipment used would be things like computers or machine tools, um, conveyor belts, for example, the types of things that you would see on an assembly line, or the tools that are used in constructing a product. All of that qualifies as capital. And the fourth one that you're likely to have to deal with is entrepreneurship. Now, some older econ books refer to this as management. But you don't want to think of every manager as falling into this category because it's not exactly the same thing. Entrepreneurship is the brain power, the ingenuity, to pull everything else together. So if you want an easy way to think about this, you've got the mind, the muscle, the tools, and the raw materials. Those are your four resources. Now, in order for a business to obtain and employ these four resources, they have to pay for them. And we break down the payments into four separate categories also. We'll start with land. First one there is going to be rent. And we'll keep these green because it takes money to buy them and, you know, for those of you who are very visual, green is good. Rent. For labor, usually we just call it wages. Wages and salaries can both be payments for labor. We'll keep it nice and simple and just say wages. Now for capital equipment, when we think of purchasing capital equipment, you have an outlay of money, usually money that has to be borrowed or we usually think of it as being borrowed, so that the payment on that is going to be interest on that debt. Now, how do we keep an entrepreneur operating for this business? What is the payment? What is the 
incentive for the entrepreneur to be involved. That's profit. We use pi for profit. So you've got natural resources, work, tools, machines, plant and equipment, and the brain power to pull it together. Payments made by the business, rent, wages, interest, and profit. So that's our starting point. From there, we want to go to the circular flow model because I want to remind you of how these pieces fit together so that we're not doing this backwards when we start talking about the graphs.